Hey everyone, Dave Floss here with Prometheus Falling Toys, and today we are going to be doing some fine detailed text laser engraving. So stick around. So if you've watched any of our previous videos, you know that one of the things that we like to do is very fine, small objects, whether that's 3D scanning, 3D printing, and now laser engraving. Now we have another video that we did recently that talked about some of the laser engraving projects that we've done, but today's shorter video is going to focus on one that we've seen in a lot of the Facebook groups, and that is doing text. Uh, I've seen a lot of amazing projects out there, um, people taking old uh, recipes, right, handwritten recipes and transferring them into, um, into the uh, laser engraving, putting them on a cooking board or a cutting board or a cookie sheet or, or, or what have you. And, and it's really awesome and impressive. But the one thing that we've, we've kind of heard a lot about is, well, when, when we burn it, we're not getting quite the detail. We're not getting, you know, whether it's the lettering, uh, et cetera. So we're going to kind of talk about this. And just to preface, this is going to be using the Laser Pecker LP4. Uh, we've done this with other devices as well. So really it's, it's not device specific, but today we're going to just for convenience sake and speed, we're going to use the LP4. But when I say small, and most of the projects I'm referring to are, are fairly sizable, right? They're cutting boards of various sizes. So when I say small, I am talking about getting text onto a dog tag. And when I mean text is I don't mean one word or two words or a pet name. I mean lots of text onto a very, very small object. So the first thing I'm just going to I'm going to say right out the bat is when you're putting this much text onto a very small object, it's going to be small, right? The key is not necessarily size. You can only make it so big depending on how much text you have. The key for me is I want it to be as clear and legible as possible. So one of the ones that we've done um, and it's actually one of our more popular ones is from Dune and it's called the Litany of Fear. It is, I must not fear, fear is the mind killer, and it has an entire uh, uh, quote that goes with it all the way down, which is only I will remain. So how do we get all this, all that onto this tiny little uh, object that's like an inch by two, two and a half inches, uh, pretty small. So that's what we're gonna walk through today. So let's get started. So looking at our, our layout here, uh, first of all, uh, while there's a lot of different software out there, the most popular one uh, used by a lot of people is Lightburn. We are using, and our focus has been, using the software included with the uh, laser engraver. In this case, the uh, design space, laser pecker design space um, that, that, that we're using. So out of the box, no, no high level customization or special license software necessary. We are using what was included with our device. Now, uh, so we're looking at the design space uh, layout here. We've already connected our device. Um, if you need any assistance or, or walkthrough of connecting your device, uh, you can look at some of our other videos. And of course, there's a lot of much shorter videos, simple videos from Laser Pecker and other uh, members of the community that have done things like how to plug in your device, wire up your device. So let's start with, we are using design space from Laser Pecker. We are using it on a PC, not a mobile phone. Um, I much prefer using a PC connected to the device versus using the mobile app. It's easier for me. I can visualize it better. Uh, it just helps me out overall. So while we have our device connected, in one of my other videos, I also talk about templates. And I've already gone ahead and created a template for this project. So if I go ahead and click on, I've created, I'll zoom out here because I'm zoomed in almost a thousand percent. So we have this full layout for our LP4 shows us the the build area shows us the burn area when the dome if you can see in the um, in your lower left you can see the device has this protective dome uh, it shows you what that area is and I've created a uh, rectangular template right that I know is the size of the object I want to burn right or laser engrave so that's just a time saving um, and on the plate itself if we take just a quick look over here and I remove the safety cover, I've also added a spacer that allows me to very quickly line up my product on the build plate. 
so that I know I'm going to have a nice, uh, it's going to fit within the template. It's going to be nice and straight and square, and it's going to save me a ton of time, especially if I'm doing multiples, because it's very easy to swap them out without having to worry about perfect alignment because I'm using spacers to get that uh, each and every time. So I have my, my, my template that I use simply by measuring my product, uh, ideally with a caliper if you want really precise measurement, or you can use a ruler, um, and we're entering those values. If I click on the square, we're entering those values here at the top for the width and the height, and that's gonna give me a template or a rectangle that is the exact dimensions. Now, in this case, to be clear, I did lower. In other words, my template is a little bit smaller because I don't want the text going above the hole in the uh, in the dog tag. So I've actually made it so the template square actually comes from just below and to the bottom so that I know it's always gonna be squared and centered on my product. So we have our template, okay? Now the question is text. How do I do it? Do I use an image? Do I just use text? Well, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to go here on the left-hand side and we are going to go to the text option and click text. We're gonna click within the boundaries of our template and we can start typing. And we can see, well, let's, uh, let's type this. This is a test. All right, so we have our text. In this case, just an example. We can highlight that text by double clicking in the text area and then either uh, drag, and, drag and scroll or just use uh, Control or Command A to choose all your text. And we'll see we have this option, uh, several options here at the top. Uh, for example, we can change the font and it would be any true type font installed on your machine. So if you're looking for a particular font, maybe you want something that looks more like handwriting or more like stencil. Uh, if you don't have the font in your dropdown, you can go online and, and there's a lot of freely available true type fonts. The key is it needs to be a true type style font. So let's go with, let's go with Algerian. And we'll see that just like a word processor, it has updated our font style. The other thing we can do is change the alignment. For example, maybe we want it centered, uh, each line centered as opposed to from the left or right. You have some style options as far as solid, hollow, bold, italics, underline, etc. And we're going to talk a little bit about solid versus hollow in, in just a few minutes. You have the row height. This is the spacing between each row, which you can increase or decrease, depending on how much how tight you want to make it. And then you have kerning, and kerning is actually the spacing between the individual letters. So as we increase this, you'll notice that the distance between each letter in what we have is adding some space. So let's talk about the importance of spacing. No matter what you're putting in there, uh, and based on the capabilities of your laser engraver, anything that's extremely close together has the potential to what I call bleed, or to one letter seems to bleed over into the other. You don't get quite the precision and that visual, visible space between the letters, which makes them easier to, to read and to distinguish. So this is where row height is important to make sure that each row isn't bleeding into the one below it. And your kerning is important because it separates out your letters. Now it doesn't have to be extreme. This is what I've learned is that usually if I go with a one, just a little bit of added space, it really helps. This is also good if you're using a lot of text on one line. It's not a big deal here if I increase the kerning because each line is one single word. But where it can make a difference is if I go in here and add this is, and you can see now that extra spacing is really spacing everything apart a lot. And it can, there's, there, you're gonna wanna look for kind of that sweet spot that says not right on top of each other, but not so far apart that it's almost distracting because it's hard to tell where one word ends and the ne next word begins. All right, so now we have our text, we've chosen our font, we have our style, and now we want to actually laser engrave this to a product. Well, first things first, let's make sure that the uh, text that we want to engrave is going to fit within our boundary box or our template. So we're going to select the text item, we are going to simply go on it, and we are going to scroll and move that bounding box right there. That is a good visual representation of what we would expect. Now, it doesn't mean if we wanted to go smaller, we can't make it smaller. You can compress it 
generally speaking, you want to keep the ratio. So if I go back to how it was originally, if I want to resize this object but not, not distort it uh, vertically or horizontally, you can use this option right here at the top to lock your aspect ratio, which means any changes made one way will automatically adjust and reflect in the opposite dimension. So we're going to hit that. Now you'll see when we bound, it doesn't allow me to compress. It's just changing the overall scale. We can get that bounding box and we can see that doing that, it's telling us that, well, if you we want this centered on the dog tag, we're going to bring it down just a little bit. Now it's going to be, should be perfectly centered when we go to laser engrave. All right, so we're at the point where we want to laser engrave, but here is another tip that I really enjoy, and that is test, 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 test. So before you grab, whether it's your dog tag, your cutting board, now granted, these might only, these are not particularly expensive by themselves, but if you're like me, I don't want to waste, right? I want to see an example before I burn onto a final product, because if there is, for some reason, something I've overlooked, uh, maybe the text that I chose, the font that I chose, is not a particularly great, great style, then this is your opportunity to kind of run a test drive. And test driving or test printing is actually very, very simple. You do not need to use the same exact material uh, as your final product. You just need something that's going to give you a good visual representation. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that. And that is with a simple post-it note. That's right, just a regular old post-it note, something that is at least the size of my product that I'm going to be using that I can put on the uh, into the laser and that is exactly what we're going to do right now. So let's go over and we're going to put this on our laser right there into the into the template uh, that I put on my building board and uh, my spacers and everything else. So it is now laid as you can see in the video it's laid perfectly. Let's go ahead and blow that up for a second. Or let's look at the news. No, let's let's uh, so let's go ahead and blow that up. And you can see we have our alignment laser, which is specific to the LP4. So we have alignment, uh, we're at the right height, and we're ready to do our test. Let's go back to the software. So now that we have our, our test and our software, we want to go ahead and first we can hit preview. We can see that it's drawing the line around the space that's going to be engraved, all of which fits on our paper. That's excellent. Another thing that you must remember, remember, remember is we had a template, but we don't want to burn or engrave that template. So we want to unselect or deselect our rectangle so that we only have our text left over. Then we're going to go ahead. Now we've previewed. We're ready to uh, burn. And again, uh, because I wasn't on here, all I did was uncheck or hide my bounding box, uh, my template box. So by hiding it, now we know we've tested and we're only gonna burn engrave what we see on the screen. Now, before we do that, we're gonna click on our text because we don't wanna, at 100% power to depth of five, we're going to basically incinerate this piece of paper. It's just, obviously this is the setting we use for aluminum. So we are going to dial that down quite a bit. We're gonna go to only 10% depth of one. Just basically draw, use the laser to draw on the surface of the paper. Now here is another really important distinction, uh, depending on your model, and that is what is your resolution? The higher the resolution, the likelihood of better crisper uh, text you will receive. So with the LP4, we have anywhere from 1K to 8K. Because it is just text, it is not a particularly large complex file, uh, the speed will not be dramatically changed It'll be very fast on 1K, it'll be fast-ish on 4K, and it's really still pretty fast on 8K. And in this case, because I have 8K at my disposal and I'm using, I want this text to be as legible as possible, I'm gonna choose 8K. Uh, the LP4 is a dual laser system, so I wanna choose the right laser for my material. In this case, uh, for paper, we're gonna use the 450 nanometer. Single pass, power 10, depth of one, and we are ready to do our test engraving. Let's go hit laser engrave. Confirm that uh, for our line, it is, uh, for the fill, it is 10 and one. We're not printing uh, any images or any lines, so we're looking at this fill. Hit confirm. We see that it copies the text over. And once that text is copied over, we should see our machine. Oh, there it goes, boom, boom. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the machine, even though it didn't finish. Again, this is just a test. I don't necessarily need to see all of it. Uh, this is just for me to look at the quality. Uh, you know, is it gonna look the way that I want it to look? So now that it's done the test, I will raise my bed. I will slide out my slip of paper. And you can take a look right there. And here, here's the thing, even at 10% depth of one, it actually burned through the paper. It actually removed the paper. So in this case, I can definitely see a beautiful, perfect outline of my letters. What I don't necessarily see is uh, some of the shading <laughs> because it actually, but you can see that resolution. It's really solid. Um, it's it's going to be very hard to see, but there's even areas where the little bits, if we look at our screen and I zoom in, some of the little bits of the outline, this black outline here, the black outline, kind of that three-dimensional almost look to it, is actually in the paper. It actually was able to cut that out at such a fine resolution. Um, so this is a perfectly good test. Now, of course, what I can do is then say, well, uh, I don't want it to burn through my paper. I could always adjust my settings. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And I'm also gonna make one other change so you can see the difference when we do it as a line, not as an image. Let's do that now. So the first thing we need to change is, as I said, we want to change the text that we have. We really don't need to check anything else. We know that our alignment is good, uh, our placement is good, but we're going to change the style. We're going to click on the text in question, click style, and do hollow. And you see right there, it has now removed all of the, the, the graphics or anything inside the lettering and is just creating an outline. That's exactly what we want. We're going to take our same post-it note, we're going to place it right back in the machine, just turning it uh, 180 degrees so we're printing on the other corner. We're going to lower our work bed or our laser mount. And now the one thing I want to do is, knowing that I burned through that paper, I'm going to, I'm going to dial it down a lot. I'm going to go to a power of three, just 3% power of this 10 watt laser. I'm going to leave it at 8K resolution. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop it again. Um, again, I don't necessarily need to see all of it. I just wanna see one complete line to see how the quality turned out. Let's raise that up. Let's look at our piece of paper. The first thing is, did it burn through the paper? And it still did, just a little bit. Not as bad um, from a cutout perspective, but what we can see here is there's our this. You can see the difference between when it cut it out or was solid. So now we can get, you know, we can take a look and say, okay, the lettering looks sharp, it looks crisp, or not. Um, is the spacing look good? You know, I can do a visual, right, of taking my dog tag, and it looks, you know, it looks like it's lined up pretty good, lined up pretty good that way. So this is, I mean, this is a super cheap, that, this took about 60 seconds, if that. So in reality, this is a super simple, cheap way to run several sample tests. And remember, it doesn't have to be something this small. If you have a regular, you know, a larger project, you can use a full-size sheet of paper or even uh, cardstock, whatever, you know, simple, cheap, disposable, recyclable material that you have that, that allows you to kind of test this and sample out your data. So if we're at a point now where we feel fairly confident that the material, uh, sorry, the text that we're using, the font that we're using, and the settings that we're using um, uh, look good, then we can go on into our final product. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, we're coming to an end. We let it run the full gambit. Uh, let's take a look. All right, it took about two, two to three minutes, not particularly long. Raise our bed. Slide out our product, and there you go. So we have nice, clear lettering. I'm just taking a look. It's it's very hard to see on a webcam, uh, but the lettering is clear. It's clearly engraved. We've got that nice hollow look. It's again a little bit hard to tell um, uh, where it did and didn't engrave, but the T has a hollowness to it um, where it didn't. You know, you know, where it's got that area that it doesn't engrave, doesn't laser. So we've got kind of like that outline of all the letterings. And ultimately this, this looks good. It's easy to read. I mean, if you can read it on there, um, that's, that's already a good, uh, good progress, right? 
because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get super small. We're gonna get really tiny uh, on this and still look to get nice crisp lettering that you can read, even if you need to use a pair of cheaters uh, in order to see it. So let's do that next. Uh, in this case, it is the Litany of Fear from Dune. I've gone ahead and just already imported it as opposed to typing it on the video, not only to save you your precious time, but to spare myself the embarrassment of all the typos when I try to type uh, fast. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to actually turn off my rectangle. I want to adjust the Litany of Fear just a little bit because it wasn't quite centered. I want to get the best... Uh, Gotta slow down here. I'm, I'm clicking everything except what I want. Uh, all right, rectangle, boom, boom, boom. All right, so we're looking at our text um, and uh, just making sure that it's square. Now, the same premise that applied when we did the "this is a test" with big, larger letters, which which came out which came out really well, still applies when you're using really small letters, and that is ultimately selecting the text and making sure that we are uh, applying some of the same default approaches to it. First of all, is the spacing between the lettering. Uh, if it's too close together, regardless of the font, uh, there's that chance that it's gonna bleed or you won't be able to see where one letter ends and the next one begins. So we click on that and we can add to our kerning. Now remember, if you add to your kerning and you add some of that spacing, you can see that it's gone outside the boundaries of our box. So let us also consider that instead of going from one to two, we could do a 1.2, just a little bit of added spacing getting in between uh, those letters. Uh, the row height, uh, in this case, the row height looks pretty good. There's some good distance between the rows based on the font um, that we've chosen. And lastly, and probably just as important as everything else, is going to be the font that you choose. Now, where I've seen a lot of people uh, kind of, I don't want to say get hung up, but basically, you know, is there, they choose certain fonts and then those fonts don't really translate well when they burn. Sometimes a really bold font uh, can really kind of bleed because it's a much larger letter. And at the same time, you can be sometimes challenged with more script-like fonts. Um that are more like handwriting. So you, you might want to just experiment a little bit as some fonts just will ultimately give you uh, better. Let's zoom in real quick and I'm gonna give you, you know, just a brief example. If we look at this particular font and I'm gonna focus on things like uh, the E where we can see that the, the, the top circle of the E is extremely tight, extremely. That, that could come across looking like a C right uh, when it burns. If we don't get that perfect little little E uh, space there, there is a chance that that could, um, that that might not turn out as well. And and so you really wanna kinda look through your font or, or your what you've written and ask yourself, okay, are there areas where I'm concerned that these the M, if they're really tight um, curves and other things, are they going to uh, potentially get lost or bleed or, or not be as legible? Um, so what we can do here is we can go to our text. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can lock that rectangle because this is one of the downsides of using uh, the built-in software. Sometimes it just it's not as intuitive and doesn't quite respond the way I would expect to. I'm trying to click my text and it keeps wanting me to hit the box. So we're gonna turn off the box for a minute so that I'm allowed to hit my text. Let's go ahead and select all, and let's try a different font. And one of the nice things about, at least on the Windows version that I'm using, is that you can kind of get a, a quick look at the font that you're gonna that you might want to use as you scroll down through those true type fonts. For example, you know if we look, and it's probably gonna not come across super easy, but this Algerian and let's see if I can find another one. Anything that's condensed, you're gonna probably be challenged because it's squeezing the letters. Uh, together. Uh, this black adder, let's try that. Oh, see, now that I'd probably be like, yeah, that's probably not going to come out. Uh, come out well at all. Um, just too compressed, too tight. Um, so let's see if I can, I'm going to try to pick, do, do, do. Let's go with, let's try century. All right. All right, I'm going to take a quick look. So what I like about this 
uh, is that very clear uh, font. Each letter really is, is, is not overly uh, either compressed, produced. It's, it's I mean, I'm, I, I guess I'm trying to find a fancy way to say it's very clear and easy to read. Each letter is just clear and easy to read and make out what it is. So this is going to be the one that I'm going to use. I've added just a bit of kerning. Let's go ahead and click that text. Our row height looks good, our kerning looks good. Let's go ahead and make sure that our alignment is good. Let's bring back our template box. All right, by choosing, now this is important too, when you change fonts uh, with true type fonts, it might adjust the spacing and the size. And in this case it did, and it did bring us beyond the edge of our work area. So I'm going to want to click on that text and I'm gonna to wanna to bring that within the range of our project. And actually, I'm going to leave it just a little bit off the bottom because that's where the the dog tag curves. And what we have now is, okay, I have my, I have a font that I've chosen. It looks nice and clear. Um, we're going to get rid of our, our template box. We are ready to uh, preview and then and burn. Let's make sure we click our text, make sure our settings are where we want them to be. We want this at 8K, which again, not going to add a lot of time from a from a processing perspective uh, because it's just text, but probably worth it if you want to get the go with the highest quality. My opinion is go with the highest possible quality uh, when you're dealing with text or especially really small text. Uh, we're going to do a single pass, 100 power, depth of five. All of those settings are more than acceptable. So we're going to take our our product, we're going to place it in the machine. All right, it's done. Let's take a look and see how it turned out. Let's uh, go over here and raise our bed. And let's take a look. Excellent. All right, well, let's go full screen. There you go, folks. Let me see if I can pull that out so we get... The hardest part, again, is not doing any of this work. It's trying to share what they look like after the fact so what i will do is i will uh yeah let's uh we'll just add a photo that's the easiest way to do it i'm going to take a nice photo right now with my phone and that way i can bring up i'll be able to bring that up um end of the video when i do the editing so but i can tell i mean take my word for it i guess uh it you can read it you can read it Clearly, you can make out the words. I'm um, looking for examples where it maybe bled anywhere, and overall, it came out real good. I think that the key is again, and I didn't do it in this case, but um, if you're not certain, using that test print example, right? Using it on a piece of paper, cardboard, whatever, or or if you have scrap material that you're not going to use, you know, I would rather do three or four different examples, different fonts, different spacing to kind of dial it in and get it right where I want it and then go to your final product and you're going to get the best possible uh, results. And again, I'm doing pretty extreme here. I mean, this is going this much text, this small on uh, this object is is definitely probably as far as I'd want to go um, as far as as far as size and quality and sharpness and everything else. And even then, uh, the the LP4, and again, it's it's not just about the LP4. It's not just about 8K. The, before I had the LP4, the device I had went to a max of 2K, um, and I was able to get really good results. But the key was was kind of finding that sweet spot uh, with the font that you choose, the sizing of your letters, and the spacing that takes place. So, all right, so we've walked through text and using a few different true type fonts and some of the settings that you can use uh, to try to get the best possible quality out of those fonts, especially when you're doing small prints. But what about when you want to take something original, something that was uh, handwritten, hand printed, uh, or you really you want to you want to get as close to a perfect duplication as possible? Well, let us start. Let me start with saying two things. First of all, 
I believe wherever possible, when you can, you want to use a true type font that uh, closely resembles what you're trying to do uh, because you have a much higher degree of control over that versus something that is uh, an original. Because ultimately, when it's an original, you're going to be dealing with a copy, an image, a scan of that. And that comes to item number two. If you want to go with uh, recreating something uh, as a duplicate, the quality of what you uh, of how you capture that is going to be very indicative of the quality you get out. In other words, um, if you if you scan it, if you take a photograph of it, you, the higher the quality, the higher the resolution, all of those various factors uh, are going to play into how much you can uh, the quality that you're going to get out, or how much you can manipulate uh, without losing some of that quality. So for today's example, for today's test, and, and usually these, you know, again, I've seen things like, oh, here's a recipe I want to engrave onto a cooking board that was handwritten by my uncle from 100 years ago, whatever. And, and that's awesome. Um, for today, we're going we're gonna to simplify it a little bit, but, but the tools and techniques we use would apply regardless. We are going to uh, take this post-it note where I've just written hello uh, in, in my fine penmanship. And we want to turn this into something that we can then laser engrave onto a product. Uh, so the first thing, the very first thing, as I mentioned earlier, is we need to get this physical object digitally into, uh, into our computer and into our software. To do that, there's a number of different ways you can do. But I went with the one that I think is the most common that people would have or uh, available to them. And that is taking a, a picture of this with your phone. Uh, so you want to get as close as possible. <clears throat> you want to get as close as possible when you're taking the image. So you get the highest amount of detail and resolution. Of course, you want to make sure that the photograph itself is as sharp and as clear and in focus as possible. The better the starting quality, very likely, of course, the better the, the output quality. So that's exactly what we did. We took a picture of our post-it note. So in the software now, let's go ahead and import that into our um, into the software. Now, because we took a photograph with our phone and then just transferred that file over to our computer, we are going to add an image just like we would if we were uh, any other image. Uh, in this case, we're going to go to our, here we can see down here, I have saved my post-it note. Boom, boom, post-it note. There it is. Hello. Now, already we can see, yeah, it looks, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because what it is really capturing is a lot of the detail around how I write and where the pen has the most pressure, uh, et cetera. But again, there's, there's. There's a lot of noise, if you will, and we're going to want to clean this up to get the best possible uh, output. So the first thing we notice is that when we import something, it goes into that straight black and white. Uh, the 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 lighter background or the yellow of the post-it note has has disappeared uh, because the post-it note was on a black background. It did, and that's part of the picture. We still have that black background, and then of course we have our lettering. So the first thing we want to do when we have this uh, is use the edit tool. So we selected our image, we're gonna go to edit, and we wanna get rid of anything that we, we don't want. And the easiest way to do that is using this cutout option right here in the top menu. Hit cutout, it'll allow us to draw a box right around what we wanna keep, and then we're gonna hit, now a lot of people say, okay, they hit okay. It, it actually doesn't do anything if you hit okay. You have to first hit the checkbox to accept the change, boom! Everything else goes away. Now we hit OK. And you can see all we're left with is our lettering. Um, and of course, like before, like any other image, we can move that lettering. We can reshape that lettering. Now, here's another good example um, that I'm going to share. So if we were, for the sake of argument, if we were going to put this onto uh, um, onto that dog tag where we already have that, that template, right? So we can see our template. We can take our hello, we can move it. Now, if we resize this, this is another piece of just general feedback I have, is by uh, right now we've locked our aspect ratio. Any changes made to one dimension automatically change to keep the exact ratio and scale uh, consistent. Now, I've told you in, in earlier and other videos, you can turn that off if I wanted to basically, in this case, let's say compress. 
I want to squeeze it into the space that I have. But I will warn you that when dealing with um, where you've taken something original like that and you compress it, you have to be very thoughtful because unlike true type fonts and text, we don't have the same control about spacing between letters. Um, uh, we can't go in and do spacing and, and, and the other settings that we have when we're dealing with text. So be thoughtful anytime you're changing the ratio or scale that if you start pushing things together or separating them out too far, that is, th that's going to reflect in your final, your final output. So we have our hello and, and technically right now we could go right ahead and we could just burn this image right onto our product. Uh, and in fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and click our image. I am going to set this down to power. Now I'm going to be doing it on paper. I'm not going to be doing it on aluminum. So I'm going to really dial down the power, dial down the depth. I'm still going to leave it at 8K. It is an image and I want to get the best. I want it to look as close to what's on my screen as to what goes on to my paper. So let's go ahead and put the paper in the machine. Now what always impresses me about this machine is that even with the power dialed down super duper low, we actually did still go right through the paper. Um, but I think the most important thing here is that even though it did go through the paper, and we lost our O, unfortunately, as a result of that. But you can see right there, we got pretty much exactly even down to the little extra, I mean, my H where I do the cross goes just beyond the edge of the H. It looks, well, it looks exactly as I would expect it. It looks exactly. Um, now, there are some other settings you can play with because another good example here is that right now I did a, you know, my writing is particularly simple, right? It's not cursive. They're not very big block letters. I didn't do it originally in marker, which had much thicker stroke lines. Um, so because it's really kind of simple lines, um, it wasn't hard, uh, to incorporate that into the software and kind of manipulate that. But there are a few other things. If you had done a, a test print and you're like, mm, uh, you know, maybe it's not as sharp as I like, or there's some, you know, there's maybe some artifacts that it picked up. There are some additional tools that you can use. And again, I'm focusing on just the software included. Now, if you have software like Photoshop or some other photo editors, of course, you could import that in there uh, and do a lot of different uh, manipulation, cleanup, adjustments, uh, etc., to to get the best possible final uh, image quality. But today we're kind of focusing on just using the software included uh, with our device. So again, we can select our text. We can so because it is actually an image, right? It's an image of text. You can use the other image tools, for example, things like Dither, right? Um, we could use Dither if we wanted to control things like contrast um, and brightness. It's not going to have much of an effect because we already got rid of everything else in the background. Um, canvas we can use if we want to increase and decrease the threshold. Maybe I'm, I maybe have I have really dark blocky letters. You could lower the threshold and kind of uh, basically uh, soften that up a little bit if it's coming too too thick, too heavy, kind of bleeding. Uh, of course, we can increase the threshold and go with the darkest possible fill uh, available. Um, and, and there are other tools as well. And honestly, the way that honestly I approach it is sometimes if I don't know exactly what a tool does, I click on it and see what it does. Like stamp? No, nope, that's definitely not what I'm looking for. Uh, but if we go back to just bin um, for the black and white, I'm going to bring my threshold up because I really, in this case, now you can see how much it thickened those lines. If I go all the way to the top, it's going to get ugh, nice and thick, which maybe is what I want. Maybe that's a good outcome um, for my hello because I have such thin uh, thin lines and thin letterings. But again, just dial it up and down and, and kind of see visually what looks, uh, what, what looks like it'll come across well. Now, Aside from that, we can, of course, go back into the edit options, as I showed you earlier. And it has a few other things. It has an eraser, it has a magic eraser, and it has automatic. These are very, very, fairly basic tools. Um, obviously, you know, something like Photoshop is going to have all kinds of tools that you can use. But some of these tools can work out really well. Uh, things like automatic trimming um, can work well. In this case, it's not going to do much because there's almost nothing to trim. Um, but if there was other stuff floating around, you could use automatic trimming. But really, one of the simple ones you can use um, is your eraser. So if we look, and I uh, kind of, let me increase the size here. Let me just hit cancel. I'm going to boot 
bump this up uh, pretty large here. All right, now let's go back, click our item, go to edit. And what you can see here is with my handwriting, the way that it is, and this is actually funny because what you have here are some of these little artifacts in the lines, and that is just the tiniest bit of smudge. Uh, when I look at the original, that's either where the pen had a little bit of whatever on it and just kind of deposited some additional ink. Uh, it could have even been my finger or thumb as I was writing, just barely grazed the surface. But I've got, you know, we're, we've got the stroke of the H here, right, where I've written it. But then we've got a little bit of this artifacting, and it does, it does come across, hard to believe, but it does really come across um, in the final, final item because we're doing it at such a high resolution. So we can use something like an eraser. We can adjust the size of our eraser. And I can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to just kind of uh, clean up that line there, right? And maybe leave a little bit of that curve at the top of my H. Uh, I've got this little nub sticking out the top of my E. We can clean, oh, clean that off. Uh, the O, this is actually, let me see. When I write, yeah, that's actually when I write the O, I got like this little, little thing I do right at the beginning with the doop and then do the, do the circle. So that's actually part of it. Um, so we can see just, again, this doesn't have to be, you know, uh, brain surgery, so to speak, but I, you can go in and just use an eraser to kind of clean up any, any little fragment, um, pieces, uh, pixels that you want to get rid of. There's a magic eraser as well. Um, you know, we can try, and again, I think the, the challenge we have here is it's such a basic image. The magic eraser is going to be like, I don't, I don't even know what to, I don't even know what you want me to do. Um, we're going to hit Okay. And we can see that it did clean up and we got rid of the little areas. And then we could follow the exact same process to test print this and then move on uh, uh, to our final product. So ultimately, those are the steps that I use. And again, the if there's one underlying message, it's going to be practice, practice, practice. Every bit of handwriting is different. Every... Uh, the results, uh, the product, the surfaces, all this, there are a lot of variables. And the best thing, in my opinion, that I've done that I think would work well for you is uh, practice uh, and do samples and dial it in and, and adjust, right? There's very inexpensive ways to create. And, and again, I'll give you one last piece of hopefully good, good input, good advice. If what I was doing, if I was doing a handwritten version of the Litany of Fear, in other words, a lot of text, like a, it's a recipe would be a great example. Lots and lots and lots and lots of text. Um, the first thing you might do is just say, I'm not going to try to do all of the text. Let me grab, a, you can cut, a, if we had a larger piece uh, uh, of this image, cut out just a section. Maybe even the section that you think is going to be the most challenging to get good results with. Just do a segment. It doesn't have to be everything. Go in and look at the settings that you can adjust and dial down and then do a test print of just that little section. And if that comes out well, then just bring in the full item and apply the same general approach to the full amount of text or the full image that you have. In other words, you don't have to do all at once. You can absolutely start with a smaller segment to uh, practice, experiment, and produce some samples and then use that to help you, you know, and as you're going, if you're following certain settings, whether it's uh, certain resolution settings, uh, the certain image settings that you're using, uh, if you're using true type fonts, maybe it's the font settings. Uh, is it bold? Is it italic? Have you changed the spacing? Write those settings down because then it's very easy on that project or even future projects to quickly recreate the same results that you got when you finished. All right, there you have it. We've taken true type font, we've taken handwritten images and converted them and adjusted them uh, to get the best possible results when you are doing uh, text or word laser engraving, uh, both in large scale, handwritten scale, photo scale, and really, really small scale uh, on your laser engraver. So, of course, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please check us out on our YouTube and uh, YouTube channel and our Facebook page. If you really like the video, go ahead and click uh, like or subscribe. We love uh, when we get new followers. And of course, we have a whole bunch of different videos on anything from 3D scanning to 3D printing to laser engraving to toy making and a little bit of potpourri mixed in uh, in there as well.
And also, we'd love your feedback, not just on the video, but on your experience with your laser engraving. What's worked well for you? Do you have good tips and tricks for others that you've come across? And of course, are you having challenges? Are there areas where you want some help and input? You know, there's a lot of great communities, uh, both within the ones that, uh, that I run and of course on Facebook and others with wonderful people putting together their experiences um, and how they do things and sharing that with, with, with the community at large so that we all get the best enjoyment out of our laser engraving products and the, the various projects uh, that we use. But thank you again for joining. I'm Dave Floss with Prometheus Falling Toys, hoping that you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.